Welcome to the first video of our foundational training series, where we make an introduction to Larsa 4D for our new users. These foundational learning video series aim to introduce the user interface and the main program components of Larsa 4D. In this tutorial, we will first examine a complete concrete bridge model to get an overview of our application and help our new users to get familiar with the graphical user interface. Later on, we will create and analyze a simple model using certain program components to show some of the practical features of Larsa 4D. Larsa 4D is a general purpose finite element modeling application with special tools developed in partnership with leading bridge design engineers for the analysis and design of nonlinear, segmental, cable supported, steel girder, and other complex bridge structures. Upon launching the application, the welcome screen will appear. To keep yourself up to date, you can see the latest version of the program, check out some of the product videos, and view the upcoming trade events. Also, you can find information about our support and training services. Let us close the opening window and move forward with our example model. We have the main menu at the top of the screen, the toolbars right under the main menu, and the explorers to the right of the screen. We can access many of the features of Larsa 4D to model, analyze, and design complex bridge structures using various commands, spreadsheets, and special tools from the main menu. The input data menu on the menu bar is one of the most commonly accessed menus, containing commands for accessing all the input spreadsheets, importing material and section properties, changing the input units, and connecting and editing databases. We will be taking a more detailed look at the input data menu when we start modeling our example model. The toolbar mainly contains special tools to conveniently modify the selection state of objects and use the graphics view to effectively display FEA models. You can see a little bit about how the graphics window works as I switch between the pointer and rotation tools. Here, we can change the displaying perspective, rotate the structure in simple directions, and zoom in and out including dragging the window to zoom in. And here we have the selection tools. Every joint and element in the model starts off selected. We can use the selection tools to select and unselect elements by clicking or dragging a window with the mouse. Specify the type of the element to be selected or unselected and hide the unselected elements. Select special can be used to select and unselect objects based on a filter. There are also a few keyboard shortcuts for selection, such as U to unselect all and S to select all. Other shortcuts are listed in the menus and in the help. Larsa 4D uses explorers to rapidly navigate through the project. The Construction Stages Explorer is used to set up stages and steps for a construction stage analysis. The Results Explorer is used to explore results from analyzed load cases. The Structure Groups Explorer is used to break down the structure into groups to view and modify them. Structure groups can be used for extracting results in particular portions of the structure, introduced into a step of a stage construction analysis, and used as design groups for steel design. Structure groups can be organized into subfolders within folders as desired. To create a structure group, we select the joints and elements that we want to include in the group and unselect everything else, and then click Add Group. The section commands on the groups are used to quickly select and unselect groups. Here I am selecting the member elements that comprise the first column. The Model Data Explorer is used for quickly adding new elements to the structure and modifying the model geometry. For example, we can use the Model Data Explorer to modify the orientation angle of all the column members that are just selected. Notice how the orientation angle is shown in bold letting us know that it is pending. To apply the changes, we click the check mark at the top of the explorer. The Load Cases Explorer is used to create and edit load cases and combinations. We can use the Add Load Case button to create a new load case, and then edit existing load cases through spreadsheets by double-clicking on them. We can always change the display of the explorers as we wish, 
or close and open them using the Show Explorers command under the View menu. Now, let us move forward with the analysis. The Analysis menu offers all of Lars's analysis types and has commands to open windows for some analysis options. For this model, we'll perform a nonlinear static analysis. Now, we can look at the results, starting with graphical results. We can use the Graphical Results tool to display different types of results. Upon clicking the Member Forces tool and selecting a force direction such as MZ and selecting a result case from the Analysis Results Explorer, we can display the moment diagram of the selected elements in their local Z direction. The legend on the right side of the screen provides the minimum and maximum values plotted. We can also choose which type of selected elements to be displayed in the graphics view to make the graphical results extractions easy. For example, let us right click anywhere on the screen and select Show to open the Graphics Display Options window. This can also be accessed from the Graphics menu. Let us turn off the display of shell elements to easily view the moment values on the girders. We can also extract results in spreadsheets, either from the Results menu or by right clicking on a result case in the Analysis Results Explorer. We can use the control key to select multiple result cases. Here we can see the name of each of the selected result cases in rows one after the next. We can use the drop down menu to envelope a column that corresponds to the selected force direction. Now the rows alternate between minimums and maximums. The first row shows the results from the result case that had the minimum or most negative force in the Z direction for joint one, which turned out to be the wind case. The next row shows the results from the result case that had the maximum or most positive force in the Z direction for joint 1, which turned out to be the DL case. The other columns show the concomitant forces. We can increase or decrease the number of segments of the members when extracting membrane forces graphically or through spreadsheets. For instance, let us go to the Results menu, Results Display Settings window, and select the number of segments as 5. We can see that the results are extracted at 6 evenly spaced stations along each member numbered 0 through 5. This setting also controls the number of stations members are divided into when viewing the member forces graphically. Last, we'll take a look at the deformed model in the graphics window. Note that the deformed model is always shown with a scale factor that can be adjusted using the slider at the very bottom right of this application. We can switch between result cases using the Analysis Results Explorer and turn on animations in the Floating Graphical Results option tool window. In this section, we'll create a model of a straight, 60-meter, 3-span, single-girder concrete bridge from scratch. We'll be modeling the superstructure only using member elements. The first step in any Larsa 4D project is to set up the units using the Units command in the Input Data menu. In Larsa 4D, different units can be used in different parts of the application. We can set up different units for each category for convenience. Clicking the Imperial or Metric button will quickly set up the default parameters for each category. The Change Labels command will only change the units without numerically converting them. The Apply Conversion command will convert the numerical values as well as change their unit labels. Let's click Apply Conversion to change the project's units. Now, we'll bring in some material and section properties using the Materials and Sections tools in the Input Data menu. These two tools provide standard materials and section shapes from databases included with the application. For the girder section, we'll choose one of our parametric database templates which allows us to type in the particular dimensions of this model. We have a variety of standard shapes and databases to choose from. If we go to Input Data Properties, we can see that the imported material and section have gone into materials and section spreadsheets, respectively. Sections come in what we call stress recovery points. These are the locations on the cross-section where stresses are reported at on the member stresses spreadsheet and in the graphics window when viewing results. In the joint spreadsheet, we will put in all of the coordinates and restraint settings for the four supports. 
but rather than typing in all of the coordinates of the supports, we can copy and paste them from Excel easily. Pasting like this will insert rows into the spreadsheet. Here we can see the joints in the graphics window. Lars's spreadsheets support unlimited undo and redo. Under the window menu, let's click the tile horizontal tool to observe the joints. As I hit undo paste, the restraints on the joints are removed and as I hit redo paste, the restraints are set again. The graphics window can also be used to create model geometry. We can use the draw tool to create members. After creating members and assigning their material and section, it's crucial to also set their orientation angle correctly. The orientation angle determines how the assigned section's strong axis is oriented about the beam. For horizontal members and typical sections, the default zero degree orientation angle puts sections on their side. 90 degrees is typically correct for horizontal members. You can set the orientation angle in the Model Data Explorer or in the Members Spreadsheet. We can check the orientation angle of the beams visually by changing the displaying option from Simple Rendering to Complete Rendering to make sure we get it right. To understand the member orientation angle, we can check which axis is the strong axis by looking at section properties. IZZ usually indicates the strong axis. Hitting F1 on the member's spreadsheet will bring up our help that defines the orientation angle rules and has some diagrams that can be helpful. For horizontal members, the orientation angle is basically the angle between the global Z axis and the member's local Z axis. So, if global Z is elevation and local Z is the strong axis, 90 degrees is needed. For vertical members, the orientation angle is defined basically as the angle between the global X axis and the member's local Z axis. Next, we define loads. Let's use the Load Cases Explorer to create new load cases. We can quickly set up a self weight load by clicking on minus Z in the Load Case Properties window. This will automatically create a load case with automatic self-weight computation based on the material and section properties that have been assigned to the elements. Here, we'll also set up a second static load case for a wind load, like what we saw in the first part of this video. To create member loads, we need the numeric IDs of the members that the loads will be applied to. We can open the Graphics Display Options window by right-clicking on the screen and selecting Show to turn on different sorts of labels. After turning on Member ID labels, we can get the member numbers and type them into the Member Load Spreadsheet. We can also use the Graphics Windows Pointer tool and click on Elements to get their numeric ID. And as a third option, we can use the keyboard shortcut N. Pressing N will toggle through the ID labels for the different objects in the graphics window. Pressing N right now will turn off the labels. The next N press will turn on joint ID labels. Pressing N again will toggle back to member ID labels, which brings us back to where we started. Once more we'll turn them off again. Let us open the graphics window alongside the spreadsheet and put it in a plan view to see what the horizontal loads look like. Please note that the Input Loads option should be on in the Graphics Display Options window. We can now type in some horizontal uniform member loads. Now, let's continue with the analysis. Upon right-clicking on the self-weight result case and selecting Joint Displacements, we see that they are all zero. That's because all of our joints are supports. In Larsa 4D, displacements are calculated only at the joints. That is why it is important to have joints at mid-spans and other potentially critical locations. Typically, spans are divided into 10 to 20 member elements. Right now, we have one member element for each span. We can use the Break Members tool on the Modify menu to make more elements. For simplicity, let's break each member into six pieces. This tool will also break up the applied loads that we have already entered. 
We can see the element connectivity better with the shrink tool, which renders each element a little smaller than they are. Or use the simple rendering option. Let's do the analysis again and check the joint displacements. This time, we can see the expected displacements, both in the spreadsheet and in the deformed shape configuration. The member force and stress diagrams are nice and smooth as expected. Let's show stresses graphically this time. Here's the option to choose the stress recovery point. Again, those are defined in section spreadsheets. Here, we can see that the beam centroid is lined up with the supports. In reality, supports should be located below the girder. We can use member and offsets to shift the members up so that they are positioned correctly. Member and offsets are in their own spreadsheet. An offset can be given at the start and end of each member in global axis directions. Using the fill tool, let's set the Z offset at both ends to one half of the section depth. This gets the members positioned where we want them. The connection between the joint and the end of the member element at its centroid is rigid. For this reason, member and offsets are often used to represent a rigid connection between a bearing at a joint and the end of a member element. The transformation commands on the modify menu and the generation tools in the draw menu can be very helpful for putting your model together. Translate with copy can be used to duplicate the selected part of the structure and apply an offset. The repeated copy generation tool does something similar, but multiple times. Both tools operate on selected geometry, so be sure to select the part of the structure you want to duplicate, or unselect the part of the structure that you don't want to duplicate. These tools can be used to create a grillage model after you have created and selected your first girder. We hope you found this video helpful, and we welcome you to contact us if we can provide further information or assist your project needs.